Hello, welcome to the Pedalhead Show. Hope you have an awesome day. I know I am because the Line 6 3.7 update just came out. November 17th, 2023. I got it early this morning. And I downloaded it and I finally got the time to plug it in and try it. I have a preset here looking at HX Edit. And I have the new prize drive, which is based off of uh, the Noble drive. Uh, I basically just put these amps and effects that are in the new update just on one patch without adjusting any settings beforehand, just so you, you can hear it, how it sounds kind of out of the box or off the update. So in the new update, there is a lot of stuff that came out. You can check out in the link in the description below of all the stuff that you can get with the 3.7 uh, Helix and Helix products uh, update. Uh, I just put my favorite stuff that I wanted to try out and I wanted to share this with you, the Pedalhead Show family. Uh, we have here the prize drive, and I have that going into first this uh, the Line 6 Clarity. Now, I always like using, you know, Line 6 stuff, especially solid state, old Line 6 stuff for nice, clean, chorusy sounds. I had the Line 6 HDR 147, I believe it's called, and that thing had loads of headroom. Sure, it was 300 volts, but sure, it was 300 watts, but holy. With a Boss CE2 going in front of that, it was heavenly. But the distortion always kind of sounds thin in my book, and that amp came out almost decades ago. So now we have this awesome Line 6 Clarity uh, pre uh, amp. So clean, so clear. It almost sounds like you're almost going through a direct box. Uh, let's change the parameters a little bit. We're going to bring the drive, channel one drive. We're going to add some boost. We have a boost. Bring up the sag. A little bit more presence. We're going to drop some treble because it's a little, little high. And just for fun, like I tell you how these clean, like I tell you how these clean solid state sounding amps sound amazing with chorus. So we're going to add a 70s chorus. Okay, without. That screams Tom Petty stuff to me. That's amazing. Now here's with the CE1 kind of uh, chorus. Not bad. Not bad at all. Bring on the treble, bring on the drive, bring off the boost. Channel volume, crank those mids. All 
All right, now we're also going to look at one of the new cab cabinets or cabinet simulators that Line Six off that Line Six offered in the three point seven update. I think it was the Supro Supro Ellipse. <laughs> Now, let's see how the Line 6 Clarity and the Supro Ellipse sound with this uh, beautiful CE1-like chorus. Sounds pretty clear to me. All right, now the second amp I was really excited to hear isn't the uh, Marshall. We're going to check that out at the end here. But it was the Oblivion. Oblivion. Tossing me member. Dun, 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 dun. Saved on some scribbler. Fulton and Billy's worth. Zoot in the ocean crock, choked on the cosmic dust. What will become of us? What will become of us? Oblivion, 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 oblivion. Leave in the comments uh, what what song that was if you know it. It's kind of kind of self-explanatory. Oh, tell me in the comments who wrote it. There you go. There's a question for you. All right, so there's not enough playing around. We're going to turn off that chorus. We're going to switch amps here. Ooh. Oh, here we go, guys. Let's, try, let's check it out for a minute. Kind of reminds me of another uh, amp setting that the Line 6 used to have. If you didn't know, all these original amps by uh, Line 6 uh, are based off of some of the amps in the Catalyst. And if I had to bet my money on it, I bet you some of those amps also line up with the old Line 6 Spider amp settings that we have. Like Metal, Insane, Class A, Clean. This reminds me a lot of the insane sound, like a lot. And that's not a bad thing at all. But like, I remember it used to be like a running joke. Yo, turn your amp on insane and woohoo. But man, you, you can get really insane with just oblivion. You can be oblivious to the fact that you used to be called insane and rock on with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Has that mess of boogie tone for sure. And I did, like, correct me if I'm wrong, in the comments below, if you guys know about this, I believe there was a lawsuit between Mesa Boogie and Line 6 because Line 6 were saying that they had this insane uh, sound on their spiders and it was supposed to be reminiscent of a Mesa Boogie uh, dual rectifier. <laughs> it's kind of funny because th from what I heard, right, they took... Mesa Boogie took Line 6 to court, and the judge ruled, you can't own a sound. You can't own a frequency. You can't, unless it's part for part, look-alike, ship-alike, name, name on the brand. Unlike some guitars, you know, it's, 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 you can't own a sound. Thank God, right? Because now we have this awesome sound in our helix. Okay. So now we have these two reverbs, all right? We have dynamic bloom. Let's see, let's see if I remember this progression. Leave in the comments if you know that song too. Of course you do. Come on, you have a radio, don't you? All right. So, we're going to go back to the clean sound with the clarity of line 6 amp. And we're going to try the bloom. This is post-amp. 
Mac pickup of my 59 Les Paul. All right, so we're going to change some of the parameters. We're going to bring down the damping. We're going to, we're going to lessen the decay. I think damping come up a little bit more. Mix, about the same. Low gain. Ooh, you know, a little much. Let's bring that back. Low cut. Let's change that. Ducking. Ducking. <laughs> uh, we're going to bring that back. Level. Trails. got to love trails because I dropped my pick. With trails, we can do this. First, I gotta scoot over to, to there first. We bring up the decay, lessen the damping, lessen the motion rate. For ending a song. Now, in my opinion, that's a very beautiful hall like long reverb with a lot more low end. And I like it for using it for experimental parts. So I might I might use it with an expression pedal later on. Magnificent. All right. So now we're going to look at the non-linear. Now, I'm a pedal head guy, just like the rest of you. I'm, you're a pedal head, you're on this channel. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Thank you for your support. But if you're a pedal head guy like me, you have a lot of pedals. But the one kind of pedal I can't seem to push myself to buy, since I have the Helix, is a delay or a reverb pedal. Why would you even bother? when you have everything at your feet to almost strime in quality, or at least, in my opinion, recording studio rack mount quality, all based in this board. You know, it's just amazing. So this non-linear, I believe, is gonna have a lot more, a lot more stuff going on, so you don't have to play as much. That's always a better thing, right, guys? Make the, we're going to bring the decay to make it more normal sound. Weird, it almost sounds like a, ta a tank reverb. And like a delay with the tank reverb in, with the tank reverb in front of the, the delay, it's weird. Let's bring back that diffusion a bit. As of the mod, oh, we can change the mod rate. Ooh, do that fast. Make the spread more middle. Let's bring up the pre-delay. Let's change the shape. 
You have different shapes here. You have gauze, triangle, inverse gauze. I don't, what, the, what the heck is gauze? Like, I'm not, not going to take a COVID-19 test for reverb. All right, let's bring back that mix a bit. Where is that mix? We have mix right here, just at 50%. Usually, usually you want your delay, especially if it's in post, like 30. It's really responsive. It kind of it reminds me too much of a reverb, but in a good way. It's very responsive. It reminds me a lot of a delay, in a good way, but like... Whew. And it just has nice sparkle delay and nice... A nice uh, high, high pass roll off. That's really nice. Let's bring back the high cut so we have more highs coming through. And we can also set this to our delay time. So let's, let's give it delay time. I think uh, note sync, we're going to go for one, two, one. It very much sounds like a delay mixed with a uh, a little bit of a chorus and a, I'm gonna, with a reverb going through it. Uh, for a tip, a quick tip for anyone recording uh, with a, let's say Helix or doing like old rack mount stuff. Uh, this is an old trick that I heard, heard that I learned from my dad, who's a, a professional, who's a professional studio technician. And that's if you want to warm up your delay, especially if it's digital, you just put a reverb right in front of it. And that's going to warm it up in a beautiful way. Just a good thing to know, eh? All right, so that's that's enough checking out that uh, non-linear. I would use that as much as I'd use, like, let's say, a shimmer uh, for making my guitar sound like there's another instrument behind it. Like, when I first, you know, turned this on, it kind of sounded like there was a... It kind of sounded like there was a... String section playing behind me. So let's try that again. Late dry. Let's check that. Oh, I see. So you, when you move the late dry up, the, the it, it copies the dry and acts it like a delay over top of the reverb, so it almost adds more like a dynamic push. Gonna try triangle or wave shape. The uh, nobles, along with that, I was like, oh, wait, with the same riff, so it sounds really good. We're gonna turn that on. We're gonna go to it as well, and we're gonna change it to you know 18 volts because that's gonna change the headroom, and we're gonna see how much we can dig into this. Apparently. 
apparently it's supposed to be like a fixed T uh, TS9 or Tube Screamer like circuit uh, with a more of an aggressive mid scoop um, scoop. And I, I brought the drive up. Let's bring the drive actually down because like it's going to take a lot of the drive by itself. Spectrum, I want a little bit more highs to stand out. Base cut, we can choose that. Uh, here's nine volts. We hear that first. That sounds good. I like I like how the reverb kind of like soaks, kind of ends there in a nice uh, fashion. All right, so after that, we're gonna add the bass cut. Let's try that. Let's try the bass cut now. Okay, I like I like when the bass is cut off a little bit. It reminds you a little bit more of like a, a rat uh, using a rat in a certain way for those you know cold play esque uh, sounds. Um, I'm not gonna play this song right because I don't want to get, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to get this video demonetized, right? Demonetized. That's an awesome death metal band. Every guitar player and bass player should have at least five heavy metals um, on the board, on their boards, if they're gonna be our band's gonna be called demonetized. <laughs> All right. So that's the the prize drive or the nobles drive. Uh, it's it's just, or the space off the nobles drive od1 i believe um and it got a lot it's got a lot you can do it's it's just one of those pedals that sound good you know with anything so in this case you see i have an effects loop right here and this in that effects loop i have a wah pedal a ts9 a 1983 heavy metal um the warm audio centavo and a rat. What I'm what I'm gonna have on is just the warm audio centavo, and I might bring in the um, might bring in the wah pedal here and there. So we're gonna hear something that's boosting mids, something that's also cutting mids and boosting other frequencies, which is gonna be the noble drive. We're gonna hear those together now uh, in series with the noble drives. We're gonna have the noble drive first post uh, Klon Centaur esque pedal. All right. Here we go uh, with the Nobles Bypass with, uh, with the warm audio centavo. Here's the prize drive post Klon Sensor Centavo. Bring up that level a little bit. Let's bring in the headroom. Alrighty. Heavy metal. Okay, now let's put the prize drive pre warm audio centavo um, and all my other stuff in that effects loop. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to turn off that reverb just to get a better idea. All right, here's the prize drive pre. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Let's bring back the the spectrum. Let's turn let's turn on that bass cut. Nah, if it's gonna be in front of any other pedals, I think it needs that bass. 
Man, I'm just dropping picks today. You guys, you guys can't see this, but I'm like dropping picks like crazy. This, this, uh, the Helix 3.7 updates got me so excited. <laughs> Right now, now, now that we're having the uh, Nobles or Prize Drive in front of other uh, Tube Screamer mid-boosting pedals, let's turn it back to 9 volts so we get a little more easy saturation with uh, these humbuckers here. It's a winner, winner, chicken dinner in my book. Alrighty. Now, the biggest thing I was really excited to really show you guys was the uh, feedbacker. Here's the feedbacker, and we got so much stuff. We got feedback gain, feedback type, attack, release, dry kill, dry level, reference, silence, through, a lot of stuff. Silence, silence through you want to use, silence through you want to use if you're using it in uh, parallel. So like, for example, this, if you're going to do like that, Let's say, um, oh, let's say you're gonna have that. I'm gonna turn this off. We're gonna copy that. We're gonna. Oh, I can't paste that. That's okay. All right. Well, we're gonna have. Eh, put like that parallel circuit. There you go. <laughs> Alrighty, that's pretty wild. So when we turn it on, you know, it, it's kind of, you know, in your face. We're going to bring back the mix level here. Or is it like a... a uh, da, 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 da. We're gonna change the, the we're gonna change the uh, feedback type to let's say octave. Right now it was on like two octave and fifth, and it was a little like it's pretty insane. You know, like the amp setting, but not the amp setting, just insane. Just using the word insane. Not trying to talk too much with the spider. Come on. It's got it's got that thing, you know. It kind of sounds. Every feedbacker doesn't sound natural. I don't know. I, I've tried many. I've tried the uh, the super distortion and feedbacker, or super feedbacker and distortion, as it now is legally called. I've also tried the uh, boost and feedbacker. I had that for a long time, and I also tried the uh, the one by Digitech. Uh, this one right here. Uh, and if they don't, they don't sound natural. They just don't sound natural. So clearly. You know, if you want the feedback sound, have a cab in your room, have your, have it loud, have your guitar, and when you want feedback, just just do it naturally because the the Helix does a the Helix does a really good job of doing that. Anyways, past my ranting, uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna change the gain, we're gonna bring back the feedback gain. Let's try a little more unison, one octave, just one octave. Let's try that. Sounds hopefully this sounds less like like a theremin or whatever. That sounds pretty cool. Let's bring it up to two octaves. All right, so when you bring up the attack and uh, the release, it kind of sounds more natural, less like a theremin, but now we're gonna 
bring up the loudest because right now it's on reference. It's referencing the lowest like quarter note. Let's 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 ask it to do the loudest. So I'm going to change some, my dynamic in my playing so we kind of hear what notes going to be carried on and which notes are going to be forgotten by the feedbacker. All right, that's pretty cool. I like it how when you stop your dynamic of your playing, the feedback just stops. That's that's really handy because you know we all have had those times when we're we're in a, playing in a loud atmosphere and then we stop playing and then just hurt just doesn't, doesn't stop. You know what I mean? And that's that's the uh, that's the dictionary uh, word for feedback. It's just you look it up. What's feedback? That's exactly what it says. I'm not making that up. All right, now we also have re-trigger. Okay. So I have on the uh, line six here, I, we're going to go here to my bypass control. Foot switch two is for my bypass of that. And then all the way here, foot switch, foot switch eight is going to be the re-trigger. All right, so... Awesome. So what that does, it gives you full control in kind of a momentary way. I'd, I'd probably set that to momentary for myself since I'm so used to the Boss FB2 Feedbacker Booster, which is goes, which goes for insane prices on Reverb. That aside, you get this for free in the 3.7 update from Helix, from Line 6 for the Helix. Um, when you press the re-trigger, you can kind of play what you want, turn off, turn off the re-trigger, and play what you want, like I said, then turn it on, and then it'll pick out that note it last heard, or what you're playing. Kind of like that one delay unit. What is the delay unit again? It's, uh... Ah, oh, uh, the ratchet, or... No, sorry, poly sustain. It reminds me a lot of the poly sustain. Um, apparently, this is, this uh, feedback is supposed to take a lot of DSP. In my opinion, putting it on some patches, it takes less DSP than uh, than the and this poly sustain for sure. All right, guys. Well, let's hear this with some distortion because no one wants to just hear this stuff on just by itself, you know? Gosh. So we're gonna.
So as you can see, you can get pretty crazy with it. In my opinion, it's a great feedbacker. It's it's better than any of the ones on the market right now, and for sure. Um, no offense to Boss or Digitech. No offense to Boss or Dig Digitech. I love those guys, but um, I'm really impressed. I actually messaged uh, Line Six about I think it was about six months ago, and I told them why is it that the head rush, why is it the head rush by Avid is superior in terms of what it offers you in some areas. For example, when I, when I, before I ever had a Helix, I had a head rush, and it had a feedbacker right out of the box. And the feedbacker was great. It sounded natural, sounded good, and it had the same kind of idea where you can change octaves, but it didn't give you the reference for lo lowest or loudest. It didn't give you the retrigger option. It didn't give you the gain for the feedback, feedback type. So obviously, Line 6 stepped up their, their games. I don't know if I'm responsible. I don't know. But like, I did ask. And thank you, Line 6, for listening to your customers and bringing out this awesome feedbacker. And I might add, the, the graphics for the feedbacker is the most coolest thing. A, a dragon eating its own tail? Like, pff, come on, it's nuts. All right, enough blabbing about that. So I really like the Oblivion amp. That sounds killer. It sounds, sounds completely great. We're going to scratch that though and we're going to get to the new British 2203 uh, two, 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 JCM800 Oh yeah, that's some good stuff. Okay. Alrighty. Where's the master? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess on that note, that was a good note. That's all I'm going to talk today about the awesome Line 6 3.7 update from Helix. Update for the Helix from Line 6. This is an incredible update, giving you so much more than a couple bug fixes, but amazing amount of cabs that we'll go through in another video. Some stellar original amps. Thank you so much, Line 6, for the feedbacker and these. Nice reverbs are a nice touch as well. Tune in next time when I show you guys what the 3.7 update offers for all you bass players out there. Anyways, please like, subscribe, share if you, if you want to, and hit that notification bell so I see you all next time at the Pedalhead Show. It was my pleasure. I'm your host, Benny Grzynski. I'll see you next time. Keep rocking and stay safe. Mm -hmm.